everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In today's video, we're going to be painting the Joker's daughter. That is a miniature from Batman Gotham City Chronicles. Now, where do you get this miniature from? I hear you guys ask. This is a game made by Monolith and it's Kickstarter exclusive. You can only get Batman Gotham City Chronicles by backing on Kickstarter. And season one was a while ago, but season two is currently on Kickstarter right now. It started on June the 4th and it ends, it's only a two week two week uh, run so it ends quite soon so uh, I'll leave a link in the description below and go and check that out if you've not got the game yet. Let's start by checking out the, the prototype. This is a prototype miniature that Monolith have sent out to me and it's uh, as I mentioned the Joker's daughter. I don't know much about Batman as a whole let alone the jo Joker's daughter. Who is this character? Let me know in the comments below a little bit about her. Send me a link to some juicy gossip or something like that. So I just wanted to point out it's resin to begin with. A little bit potentially breakable uh, and it might not be the final version you guys get, but because it's resin and it's not the plastic, I am going to skip priming it. If you if if you're watching this after season two has arrived at your house and these are now plastic models, I do highly recommend you prime your miniatures before you apply paint. Even if it's resin, you really should. But I found no problems so far. Touch wood. Wow, that's not the best idea in the world. Sorry about that. <laughs> that uh, The paint just sticks to it, especially once you've varnished it at the end, and I've had no issues. So because it's a resin one with high amounts of detail, I'm just going to skip the primer to make it look as best I can for you. So we're starting with Army Painter's Survivor Skin. I'm going to use Army Painter's Paints range throughout this video, and this is the, the flesh tone that I use for, for most miniatures, and I'm going to be doing her midriff, her chest that you can see, her neck, and she's got like a shoulders, top arms, biceps sticking through. After that, we're going to be mixing a color because I just don't have a slightly off-white, purpley based off-white. So this is, it's like 90% matte white with a splash of Army Painter's Toxic Boils, which is a, it's a very, very light purple, like more or less pink, but I'd say the hue is a bit more like purpley. But as you can see, it's almost white. It's just got a slight hint a slight tinge of pink to it so i'm going to be doing her leggings i'm just trying to match that artwork that monolith have provided for us for the game and i think this is roughly the the color i'd be going for i don't know if this exists if this exists in the world somewhere let me let me know in the comments below if you can get this color but mixing colors you know if you're brand new to painting like a lot of you will be it, it honestly it's not that difficult and don't worry about having to mix it up again later on because you're just not going to even getting it close is going to be good enough. You don't need to hit it 100% most of the time if you need to remix it. Next, I'm going to be mixing another color. I'm just going to mix a bunch of colors this video. Um, check out the channel. There are loads of videos which I'd recommend if you're brand new to painting, starting with Batman Gotham City Chronicles. A lot of them were the easier models from the set to begin with. This, I would say, is a much more advanced one, probably the most advanced one by far that I've done, in fact, because it's a difficult model to paint. There's quite a lot going on, and then I'm mixing up lots and lots of colors here, and I'm going to be trying to be very careful with the washes that I apply, as you'll see later on, whereas some of the miniatures you smash uh, one color tone all over it, and that's going to do it for you. But this is chaotic red with a splash, I'd say, of white, maybe 20% max of white. I'm just trying to pinken it up a little bit, the, the red, just trying to match that artwork a little bit more closely, a bit more... Uh, burgundy, I guess, is the kind of colour I was looking for there. Then I'm going to use Necromancer Cloak, a favourite of mine, one of the nicest greys I think I use this. And I often, often use Necromancer Cloak to, to be anything from a dark grey to black, even if these boots were solid black in the artwork, and I, they probably are actually just supposed to be black with some light shining on it. I will often, and I will re recommend this, paint them dark grey, even add a wash on top of that to make them more close to black. But if you start with black, you can't make it darker. And then how, I, I'm like, how do you highlight this up? It's black. If I put grey on it, it now looks like black with grey on it. Whereas I think if you start with a really, really dark grey, like Necromancer Cloak, you do get to throw on that dark tone on top of it, which is going to run into the recesses and make those nice, solid black parts. Then the rest is going to be this very, very dark grey, almost black to your to the naked eye and then on top of that you can just add slightly lighter shades of grey on top and it's just good I think in my opinion it's going to make it look like a more a better transition and highlighted black even though it is actually technically not black to begin with so I'm also I did both boots there and I'm also going to do the uh, axe head 
there and just giving it a base coat to build up the silvers later you may not well if you've primed it you're not going to need to do that i just didn't trust the metallic paints on on the resin i mean it probably would have been fine but i've got the gray to hand so i'll just give the axe head a paint i'm also going to be doing the belt around her waist that's the recommended place to to wear a belt actually i've i've checked the wikipedia page on belts and that's what you should do she's also got this sort of dog collar around her neck i don't know if my resin miniature was a bit messed up it seemed quite hard to a paint it and b tell what that bit was but meh it is what it is i'm going a little bit rogue here i forgot to do her hair so mixing in that chaotic red with matte white same as with the skirt i just and this was my point about you can mix the same colors roughly you know it doesn't need to be exactly matching this i mixed from scratch again and i'd say it won't have been the exact same mixture but how close is that to the skirt good enough for me and once you've got some wash or some highlights on it really not going to be able to tell it's just i just think that was one of my huge concerns as a new painter that i didn't want to mix colors because i'll never mix the same color again but actually it's not as big a problem as you might think especially if you are new it's like the least of your worries that the paints are slightly unmatching that sort of thing uh, so i'm going around the the base of a hair the the bits that are close to the rest of her with my rose uh, no, it's not rosemary and co i'm using my red grass games brushes here that's the double zero and then after that because it's her hair's all spiking i was worried it was going to wreck my brush i've just got a 10 cents brush links in the description below to these value brushes from quick draw supply but yeah i could just mash that on to all the spikes after that i'm using red grass games got it right this time this is the uh, size two brush so they only do two two sizes and this is their other size and it's the much much bigger brush i'm going to use army painters angel green and just paint the whole of her coat here now i've never used this angel green before and i've had it for months if not a year and i think i didn't shake it for the recommended two and a half hours army painters paints require and it just didn't seem to be coming out or going on well it might be because i didn't use a primer it might just be because i needed to to really sort out some shaking into that but i just thought meh it's not going to matter this is this would be a non-issue i'm going to do a couple of coats i'll do some more off camera even that up a lot more and then there'll be a green wash on top of that and it's really just going to even it out a lot a lot better but shake your paints and uh, don't be don't be in a rush to get a miniature painted up for a, a, a channel before the kickstarter ends next is army painters at mummy robes this is a this is this is an off-white that they do sell so this is a slightly sort of how would i describe it like a bit gray a bit beigey just it's just an off-white and she's wearing that sort of joker mask i think as i said i don't know much about the joker's daughter but i think she's wearing a mask so i've painted it in that color it matches the artwork alien purples next this is the darkest purple that i have by the army painter that's just to paint in her gloves so she's got two gloves one on each hand and just take your time basically using the same brush throughout this entire process give or take some dry brushing and that bit of her green coat that i could step up the size but yeah this is the red grass games double zero i'll put a link in the description below to this these are i'm really really actually enjoying these two paint brushes they only do two took me a little bit of time to get used to the fact there was only two and i do have to switch out to army painters insane detail brush later on i can do all of the base coat without it but once we start getting on the details I just I find the double zero is not quite small enough now having said that I've painted some incredibly nice details with it but my eyes just they're, they're deteriorating fast so here I'm just showing you what it looks like after I've finished the base coat hopefully looking pretty decent and if you are brand new to painting you could just stop there that's not going to take you a great deal of time and I think it looks way better than some uh, gray plastic which is likely what you're going to get but we're going to take it one step further and i'd always recommend doing the washing step because this is the easiest part of the entire painting process in this particular model i'm going to be very very careful applying the the colors i want to the places i want on the miniature starting with flesh wash and this is a great wash by the army painter for painting on top of this barbarian flesh or survivor skin it's basically the same paint depending which of their sets you've got so i'm applying that to oh, her face her neck uh, shoulders and she's got a few rips in her tights as well poking through uh, is a skin underneath so i'm just applying a little bit of that wash it over there and then i'm going to get a midriff very very carefully you can see this is probably the slowest i've ever applied wash in my life and making sure it doesn't pull anywhere whatsoever and just really darken it down evenly and then it's slightly pooling exactly where i want along the edges then i'm going to use dark tone basically their black wash and this is going to be on her boots to tone that down nicely and then on her belt very very carefully if you can there's a there's a 
there's a sort of shadow between the belt and the buckle part and then also she's got a bit on the dog collar just darkening that down making it more black looking then it's going to be the toxic shader by the army painter and this is just for her gloves just going to paint all the way around her gloves and then really really heavily water that down we're talking 60 70 80 percent water and a splash of this purple and then i'm going to apply that all over those very off-white pinky parts of leggings and her top then green tone is the last tone we're going to use and that's just to apply it all over her cloak that's going to go in the recesses and make them look much more shaded than the the raised bits and even up that paint as well now i'm just showing you how this looks after i've applied, done the base coat and the washing and the washing took five minutes something like that you've got to leave it to dry for a while um, but that, that's what it's going to look like and then I had to do the eyes off camera no way I could do that with a camera in my way not reaching inside those masks but that was white eyes with a splash of really pale blue for the for the irises and then a bit of black for the pupils if you'd like to try and do that off camera I did use my insane detail brush which you can now see that I've got out while we're doing some of these insane details starting with on camera from the eyes so that was what I started with but on camera it's the mask and I just did some edge highlighting on her sort of chin, her cheekbones, and her eyebrows. Well, her eyebrow. Are they still eyebrows? She hasn't got eyebrows. She's got like the bone. So I did some highlighting on that with this with the same mummy robes. And then I'm going to be doing some highlighting of the survivor skin or barbarian flesh, whichever one you have. And this is just along all the raised, all the definition. I'm adding the definition in the muscles. So she's got her sort of midriff kind of like not abs though are they but she's quite toned so i'm highlighting up the, the the raised bits of her midriff her collarbone and her biceps as well then we're going to be doing some more highlighting with that so again i'm just showing you you can mix these up quite easily and it doesn't even matter if they match so this is mostly matte white with a splash of that toxic boils and this time if anything you want to go for less toxic boils because if it doesn't match you'd like it to be lighter than the original coat i'm going to edge highlight a top along along the top and along the rip at the bottom and then on her tights I'm going to use an old brush I'm going to be dry brushing this which is putting some paint on the brush wiping off 90-95% of the paint and then lightly scraping it over and it's catching on all the raised parts of her tights and the reason I'm not using an actual dry brush is just because this mud is really really sort of thin and quite difficult to reach to so I was just using a, a normal brush and but the dry brushing technique and those value brushes that I was using there are quite firm so that works quite well for dry brushing. Next up we're going to be highlighting up her skirt and her hair so this time instead of mixing white and chaotic red I'm mixing chaotic red and toxic boils it's a bit more pinky this time so I'm highlighting are they plaids? I think plaids right on a skirt so I'm highlighting each edge of those and along the bottom as well and that's it just an edge highlight on each part of those and then I'm going to be mixing in more toxic boils so this has now got an increased amount of the toxic boils it's much more pinky now and I'm just going along again both of these in fact all of the highlights I failed to mention are heavily watered down so we're talking at least 50% water if not more so these are going to dry a lot darker than they are and just blend a lot more evenly and then we're going to be using the same probably about 50 50 chaotic red and toxic boils at this point for the highlighting of the hair and we're going to start by basically painting on very lightly the center of each individual spike of her hair that is going to take some time she's got a lot a lot of individual spikes but it's going to make it look really good we used no wash remember on these on both the skirt and the hair so we're really working to highlight up the hair and leave that original base coat as the shadow it, below so we would sort of want to paint and basically yeah each strand after that we're going to use neat toxic boils on the hair and that's just to highlight down the very center of the front strands because most people will be looking at this you know her face when they pick her up to admire your piece of art and then we're going to get like the top of each spike so again kind of just like dry brushing that on there for the alien purple for the the gloves she's wearing i'm going to be using alien purple which is the same as the base and then after that wash is dried we're just going to be painting on um, the raised parts of all the folds her knuckles her fingers she's got some sort of folds on the or her veins sticking through on the backs of her hands so we'll we'll highlight those up um just bring that back to the base color and then we'll we'll be doing a doing a little bit of touching up on her top where it said daddy's girl uh, that is incredibly difficult to paint uh, you'll see 
periodically in the video you can see i'm wearing even now just on the bottom of the screen you can see i've got magnifying glasses on i didn't need it for all of it but some of this is just incredibly difficult for me to see so mixing in some toxic oils with that alien purple insane detail brush out so now we want much much thinner strokes much thinner highlights on just all those the same places on the gloves that we've just highlighted so we did the original alien purple to bring some color back in and we used a thicker brush so it spread out a little bit more but now we want pinpoint accuracy just to paint and those final highlights of this much brighter alien purple toxic boil mix and i'm just going to edge highlight the top of all of those letters in daddies just to make that look like the lights hit the top of the chest necromancer cloak is going to be a dry brush and this is for her boots and i'm going to just try and catch all of it there's loads of little individual details on both of her boots she's got you want to catch like the the toe cap the knee the heel not the knee the heel uh the strings what do you call them shoelaces and then uh, then there's some just detail as well that that will bring back out then i'm going to use the insane detail brush and just paint in the rim the opening of her boots as well get both of those make it look like you know the lights catching the the top of the boots with the belt and again i'm gonna to have to use the insane detail brush for this bit and i'm just painting along a top edge edge highlight and just bringing out the i don't know what you call it like the end of the belt that's sticking out from the from the rest of the belts so i'm catching that then we're going to use filthy necromancer this is a mix that i made myself on the channel and that is filthy suit 50 50 with necromancer cloak and i'm just going to dry brush that on her shoelaces just make them pop out a little bit more but also don't mind catching the toe cap a little bit as well fur brown is going to be used to when did i paint the uh, axe handle that was a dirt splatter though i feel, feel like i'm I've, I've missed that bit out the axe handle was dirt splatter we're going to edge highlight that use no wash on it we're going to edge highlight with fur black brown just along the two edges that, that the light would be hitting next we've got angel green out again i'm not going to do too much with the coat in terms of highlighting i would recommend maybe doing another highlight after this i'm just going to paint back in some of the base colors because it was so sort of thin and didn't apply quite how i wanted it's kind of actually highlighted it in a way that i quite like like you can see it's much lighter on the bottom there it's like done a lot of the work for me so now i'm just painting in all of the raised parts of each fold and just bringing back in some of that base color where the, 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 the wash has darkened it down a little bit more than I want. But you, by all means, add a splash of white to that afterwards or a lighter green and you'll be able to get a much higher contrasting finish on that coat, if it's, especially if you're going for sort of tabletop play and you want to pop some of those details back out more than I have. And then I'm going to be using Toxic Boils and Alien Purple again, the same as I did at that final highlight for the gloves. And I'm just going to be painting in the sort of piping that she's got on her coat so edge highlighting all the way around her her coat or a cloak or whatever you'd call this uh, and just in the artwork i could see her coat was green and it had this splash this line of purple all around so i'm really just using the edge of my double zero brush here and just scraping it along the edge of her coat and that's allowing the paint to just sit on the very edge of that i'm going to use army painters gunmetal the only metallics that I'm going to be using just these two silvers coming up so I'm giving it a base coat of this really dark silver that I have that's going to apply nicely on top of the necromancer cloak once so that's all over the axe handle then I'm going to use the army paint shining silver just to paint on the like sharp bit of the blade and the point on the back and don't forget to catch the front of the blade I'm also going to use this shining silver for the buckle on her belt and then her mask's got these two silver bits on I don't know what they're supposed to be they're kind of like staples I'm not, I'm not quite sure um but that, that's it i did that and then i also on a mask she had these strings kind of holding it onto her face which i did very carefully in necromancer cloak and that's it guys this is the joker's daughter completely finished i think it's one of the best pieces of work i've ever done actually i spent a long time on this which i'm normally going for the fastest possible so hopefully you guys enjoyed that do let me know in the comments below what you think that's an asphalty looking base i've done and i'll put up a video showing you how i did that i'll leave a link in the end of the video probably to that and in the description below so thank you all ever so much for watching let me just take a moment to remind you batman gotham city chronicles season two is currently on kickstarter you can get season one or season two and get it painting the plenty more videos on the channel please do hit subscribe check out patreon and all the usual stuff thank you all ever so much for watching see you again soon